Universal display stock analysis. That's what we're taking a look at today. My name's Jeff Beers. This is the 40 Finance channel. Let's dig in. All right, so a little bit of background on ticker symbol OLED. They hold all of the patents and are continuing to enable the technology for OLED screens. So these screens are very popular with mobile phones. They're also growing into TVs, potentially automotive. Basically, anywhere you see any type of screen, OLED technology is starting to penetrate the marketplace. And with Universal Display as a company, the real benefit that they have is they hold almost all the notable patents for OLED technology. They also are a corporation that focuses on research and technological uses of OLED technology. So as opposed to a manufacturer like a Samsung or an Apple who makes the screens, Universal Display is more concerned with, since they hold all the patents, how can we further this technology into consumer use cases. So it's a very interesting business that way. They do have some production in some of the chemicals that go into it, but by and large, they exist on, with holding the patents and helping companies find uses for the patents. And behind the scenes, they also have their own research lab where they're coming up with new ways to use OLED technology in the consumer and business marketplace. So this little snippet from their website kind of summarizes everything I just said. Universal Display is a world leader in the invention, research, and development of state-of-the-art OLED technologies and materials. And I highlighted down here where they talk very specifically about their licensing department, okay? With over 4,800 issued and pending patents worldwide, our goal is to enable OLED manufacturer to produce high performance products using our portfolio of OLED technology. Bottom line, they help manufacturers so that they can get more licensing opportunity, work OLED technology into things like mobile phones, wearables, tablets, notebooks, televisions, and specialty and general lighting products. So even I said earlier about screens, it's not just screens. They also have a lighting function too. So that's where this company is rooted in and the opportunity obviously with them exists in how big can OLED get and what are the, the sort of barriers to it growing larger? What is the competition from other technologies? How can manufacturers use this technology to save money, create better products, and at the end of the day, sell more things? So taking a look at the broad stock overview, OLED right now is trading at about $95. They have a trailing PE of 62.89, uh, so call it 63 for a PE ratio. Forward PE of 37.7. Those PE numbers traditionally for me as a long-term investor are a little higher than I'd like to see, but it's not really surprising that they stand where they do because this is a very future-based company. So taking their share price today and dividing it by earnings is going to get you high PE ratios. The win or the opportunity is much further down the road over the next 12, 24, 36 months if as an investor you believe the use case and think it'll grow that far. Universal does have a very small dividend at 0.27% and it looks like it paid about a quarter uh, per quarter this year. So. That's probably more important from a future view. They may turn into one of these companies that raise their dividends every year for 20 straight years or whatever it turns out to be. Um, but don't definitely don't invest in this company solely on the dividend prospect because it's very low, but at least it's there. There's uh, many investors who won't even invest in a stock unless it has a dividend. So at least in that case, 
they hit the check mark. Going deeper into universal displays, financials, you can see in the last 12 months, they've had a revenue of almost $300 million, works out to about $6.26 per share. And the quarterly revenue growth year over year is about 25%. With that quarterly revenue growth, while it's not gigantic at 25%, what we're gonna learn about Universal Display, and as, as I insinuated earlier, everything's in the future really for this company. So 2018 in particular, wasn't necessarily anticipated to be a groundbreaking year for them. All of their wins come as people continue to invest in licensing deals, to use the technology for the future. A real bright spot for OLED is their debt ratio, which their total debt right now is zero, and that puts them in a really good place. So whatever it costs to acquire all the patents, to set up the shop, their research department, etc., they've been able to do that without incurring a lot of long-term debt. If they can sell the assets that they've built, through licensing deals, for example, they are going to get a very high return on their assets. So it's an enviable position to be in and not one that you really see too often from a growth stock. Okay, so what is the opportunity with OLED? And for that, we take a look here at what I put together to be the bull case. And that would be widespread adoption across all screens for OLED technology. That's TVs, phones, automobiles, signage, etc. One of the key differentiators for OLED screens is they are flexible, okay? And that allows them to be presented, screen information to be presented in different ways. One of the big notable advances here is you're gonna start seeing flip phones come back for our current smartphones. So you might remember, I think on the cover screen of this presentation, I showed a phone that had like a folding background. That actually, I think is supposed to premiere this year from Samsung. So the only reason that's even capable, or even possible I should say, is because of OLED screens. So if that kind of trend continues, or if that flip phone becomes popular in any shape or form, much bigger than Samsung anticipates, then right off the bat, you have a bull case for this stock. And as you can imagine, anything with a folding or flex screen is gonna have a lot of uses in automobile signage. If you think about this display and all the different places that they need display screens, how valuable it would be to make it more flexible. So probably most notably in arenas or mass transit areas, cities, etc., to be able to have a curve to it or even um, a cylinder-like display around a hockey arena or basketball arena. That's what we're looking at with OLED. Those are things that are going to require significant investment from sports teams and governments, et cetera, to swap out the old with the new. But as it begins to take shape, the opportunity is pretty large. I also put on here that 2019 phone sales bounce back in a positive way. Um, we all know that 2018, we start to see the chinks in the armor of Apple and some of the own, uh, other phone suppliers as we noticed that people more or less were content to keep their phones last year. Well, if OLED and its flexible technology can convince the market to trade in their old phones, then you're talking about a massive headwind, not only for them, but for the likes of Samsung, Apple, etc. Additionally, if Universal Display, who has an entire research unit of their own, comes up with a brand new OLED use case of some kind. Let's, I'm just gonna make something up and I'll just say it's some sort of medical device or something that we did not foresee. Then all of a sudden, you're talking about the bulls coming out and really propping this stock up even more. And lastly, I put on here government contracts, right? Because anytime the government buys something, they buy in bulk. And it's not just USA, this could be Russia, this could be China, this could be anything. 
if uh, in the defense segment signage or any sort of cyclical upgrade, the government came in and, and recognized the benefits of OLED technology for whatever their use case is, you could be talking about a massive uptick in sales. All right, so continuing on the bull case story, I grabbed this quick little article out of the street. This guy, Chris Versace, had his top eight picks for 2019. It just so happened that OLED was in his top eight picks. You can see he did the consensus EPS estimates, and they're basically, yeah, they're not quite doubling, but 2018 was $1.14, then it goes to $2.54 and $19, and then almost $4 in 2020. Again, those are estimates, but you can see the growth that's occurring. And he points out how Apple began using OLED technology in the, in the iPhone 10 and goes on to add that it's expanding the technology into its two new high-end iPhones. So there will be some sort of iPhone uh, this year, probably at the end of the year. And every time a new model comes in, you know how it precipitates across all of Apple's users. So there's definitely a licensing uh, revenues to be made there. He also points out that Samsung, Hawaii, and Xiaomi are introducing new models that feature OLED displays. And TV models, a number of different TV models are on their way. I know Universal Display has contracts with LG, Samsung, and I might be Toshiba, don't quote me on that. Last but not least, uh, Chris in this article goes on to mention the use case for specialty lighting, general illumination, replacing traditional lighting and LEDs along the way. Guys, as you can imagine, lighting is huge. So if OLED starts to make its way into a replacement for both LED lighting and or traditional light bulbs, this is gonna take a long time to mature, but even just starting there is a pretty big bull case. And if that change were to happen one more step in the next few years, then the licensing royalties from that would be a big win for Universal Display. So on the flip side of the bull case, I put together a few points on what is the bear case for Universal Display, right? There's always a catch when it comes to estimates. What could go wrong that would prevent you from hitting those estimates? And as we all know, as soon as you start to slip, take a look at Apple uh, recently, as soon as you start to slip a little bit in the earnings, then your stock tends to follow suit. So what are some things that can happen for Universal Display that would be a bear case? And right off the bat, slowing phone sales. This is kind of a reality today. I think the market is anticipating slowing phone sales, so that's not necessarily a new one. It's just we need to figure out with these new product launches upcoming in 2019 from Samsung and Apple, at least here in the States, are they gonna muster any interest whatsoever? Okay, because last year's versions did not, and people were not convinced to trade in their phones. Can this year be different, or would it even be worse for some reason? The pressure is on for those manufacturers to come up with something way better this year. I have no doubt with the amount of money that's on the line that we're gonna see improvements. Micro LED adoption. So further, further, further down the road, there's a lot of people that call out micro LED as the technology that comes after OLED. So there's already uh, micro LED um, displays out there at some of the consumer shows. I think Samsung has some ridiculous like 100 foot screen with micro LED technology and the Pixel's micro LEDs are smaller. So you're talking about more detail but we're getting to the point here with, with micro LED where I'm not even sure a human could see the difference. And with micro LED, they have a lot of barriers to get through. And that's why I put over the very long term. They have a ton of barriers. They have costs. They have um, use cases. They have testing. They have pricing. 
So it's gonna be much like anything else you see in technology with micro LED. The first use cases are basically absurd, right? And, and they're gonna cost a bazillion dollars. If you want a hundred foot screen or whatever they're shopping right now, you're basically, you know, in the, in the 1% of 1% and you're gonna drop a hundred thousand dollars on a television, right? Micro LED is a subtle threat for the future. But compared to universal display right now, and as ingrained, as ingrained as they are with manufacturers, patents, and everything else, they're going to win the short battle almost for sure over the next five years. Then we'll have to take stock of where is micro LED going? Can it put a dent into OLED? That's a battle I wouldn't worry about today. But if you do get into this stock, you'll want to just chart the patterns for micro LED so you get out in time. The last thing on my list is technology problems. Those are very hard to sort of imagine in today's world. But if you go back to like the, the Samsung Galaxy when it caught on fire or whatever, or maybe it was the Samsung Note, things like that can really push you back in terms of consumer acceptance. So do the screens break? Does the flex phone split in half when, when um, you fold it? I doubt that those things would pass initial testing, but it's out there and anything that di dings the reputation of OLED technology takes universal display that much longer to do damage control, technological fixes, research, etc. So that could be a setback. And then I grabbed this last part comes from OLED's actual investor relations documents. And this is what they claim their fluctuations to be so that you could prepare for a bear scenario. Um, timing cost, volume of sales in our OLED materials, no surprise. Timing of our receipt of license fees and royalties. So this is important because it's based on fiscal year, right? If Samsung has a licensing deal for an OLED technology and they pay whatever, two pennies per whatever little widget this thing's in, and those sales or those license fees don't get calculated or paid in a fiscal year, depending on how large the contract is, it can create some earnings projection problems. So. The use case I just gave for 2019, let's say Samsung and Universal Display were going back and forth uh, when it was resolution time on the contract. You know, Samsung says, sold a million units and Universal Display says, well, we saw that you sold 1.5 million. All that little back and forth usually gets settled out, but sometimes it goes past the fiscal year and depending on how large the contract is, that can provide a significant impact to the earnings, the actual earnings for the year. They also go on to say timing and magnitude of expenditures in connection with research and development and patent related activities. So what you got here in normal speak is patent litigation, how much they have to go through that to, um, take competitors who are using their stuff and sue them and wait to get the rewards. And then technology and research or research and development obviously takes a long time. Sometimes you can speed that up by increasing the budget that you put towards it, get more researchers, get more things. But sometimes it's just the math takes longer to figure out. So they call that out here. And then lastly, timing and financial consequences of our formation of new business relationships and alliances. So this one translated for everyone at home means the sales process, right? So if they're out and we know some of the people who already buy from Universal Display, they're obviously selling to other people. I'm gonna use um, the car industry. So if you're shopping this stuff to GM or you're shopping it to Nissan, you take your pick. How long is it going to take to wine and dine these folks, get them to buy in, and then from there start using the technology and actually integrating it into a consumer product? So that stuff doesn't happen overnight. 
And while they may project to be live in GM and Nissan cars by let's just say October, um, if it misses a product cycle, it means they wouldn't come out till next October, those earnings would be affected. So a lot of stuff in universal display relies very heavily on getting contracts in, contracts signed, and checks being written. I don't think that's much different than most companies, but the difference with Universal Display is its licensing. So they have no control on how quickly a product gets into the marketplace, right? They're, they're not making the product. So they have to rely on the manufacturer to do that, and if things get delayed on that front, then their licensing fees get delayed as well. So something to look out for. All right, so at the end of the day, what is the bottom line buy or sell on universal display? I went into my tip ranks dashboard and looked up the best performing analysts who actually cover universal display. And while it's only five total, you had four buys and one hold. And what it worked out to be from a price estimate standpoint, you got the high at 140, the average is 121, and the low ball is 105. So if you set on the average of 121, you're looking at least today about a $30 uptick in this stock, something like that, over the next 12 months. My personal opinion from watching this stock over the past 12-ish months is the 121 is a pretty solid number. Universal Display has actually been projected as high as $200 on this exact same dashboard maybe six months ago, right? But the technology release schedule has taken longer than anticipated. So this is their year to start winning. I see 120 as, a, as something that's almost undoubtedly going to happen. I also think that this is a stock to hold at least through the end of 2020, while some of these big license deals get fully into the consumer marketplace. The risk is right now that you are buying with a little bit of anticipation of these deals, right? So don't forget the forward PE at 38, that's a little higher than I normally buy into. But I will say that you're one or two contracts away from that forward PE dropping substantially. So for me personally, this is a stock that I will continue to keep on my watch list. I do not own it yet. I am very intrigued by it, particularly all the patents that they hold. And for myself, if I hit the positions I'm looking to hit on my other stocks, when I get into a new buy scenario, Universal Display is probably going to be on it. But I know for sure that they have an earnings call in February. I'm going to listen to that before I make any judgment. So if you're interested in this stock, go into whatever stock uh, research platform you use. Figure out when OLED is having their earnings call in February. And I would say wait till you listen to that. See what the prospects really are for 2019 so that you can feel good. I like the 121 number as something that's very achievable. But if you're at all nervous or you want to learn more about the marketplace, listen to that earnings call in February. So that's my look at Universal Display stock. My name's Jeff Beers. This is the 40 Finance Channel. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this and I'm working hard at this channel, please like, please share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Anything you can do to show some love makes a big difference. I'll see you on the next video.